has more this morning on Letter Joy. Technical difficulties, <laughs> or as we like to call it, Good Day Sacramento. <laughs> uh, Michael Sitford is uh, joining us now. His Letter Joy is what it's called. Uh, can you tell us how this came about? So what was the idea behind this? So, to just give you a little context first on what Letter Joy is, we mail our members a different historical letter every week from figures like Albert Einstein, Abigail Adams, Frederick Douglass, you name it. And the idea came about when I was in college at my mailbox, and nobody really sends snail mail to 20-year-olds anymore. So all I could think was my email inbox is overflowing, but this beautiful medium is just empty. And I read a lot of historic letters for class in college. I was a political science major, and all I could think was these two things would go together really well. I think it's a really cool service, man. So, uh, all historical figures ranging around the board, is that what we're talking about here? So, we primarily focus on American history from 1620 to uh, 1950. You know, it's easier just to focus on a period when letter writing was the norm, and we have a great historical record for a variety of different fields and specializations. Okay, show us what the letters look like because it comes on fancy paper and everything. Yeah, so this is one of our letters. It's a letter, well it's actually two letters that we shared, uh, and this would come with a postscript which is uh, the way that our curator put the letter in context, but it's a letter from, uh, I don't know if you want me to keep holding it up, it's a letter from the British Field Marshal John Dill during World War II to General George C. Marshall, and it was because uh, the American intelligence community had denied the uh, British cryptographer Alan Turing access to uh, a classified machine being developed in the U.S. called the Sig Salic, which was the first encrypted telephone. Uh, there was a little tiff between intelligence communities over the British trying to sneak into some places they weren't allowed. Um, so eventually they got uh, Turing, who's obviously famous for the movie The Imitation Game and uh, his discovery. They got him access to the machine and uh, they would use it for Winston Churchill and other leaders to communicate cross oceans with generals, with President Roosevelt um, on top secret matters. Uh, the, ex the other side of this letter is a memo uh, where they're requesting that Churchill use the Sig Sally rather than other unclassified means so that he doesn't spill the, kind of spill the beans on the, the date of the invasion. That is really cool. I, you know, I was thinking in my mind that would be like really famous stuff that we've seen before, but this is like, like real in-depth, up-close, interesting stuff. Okay, so Michael, tell them there's different tiers to this, uh, price-wise and stuff like that, so d just kind of explain it to them real quick. Yeah, so we try to keep it simple for now. We, we have a, a three-month, a six-month, and a one-year membership, and each membership is going to give you a variety of topics. Each month of our letters uh, focuses, focuses on a different theme. Uh, the letter I just showed you was from our military communications team, which tracked the uh, the development of military communications all the way from uh, mobile telegraphs during the Civil War to um, encrypted telephony and propaganda radio broadcasts during the Second World War. That is interesting. All right, uh, it is LetterJoy, and, and uh, uh, what's the website? It's letterjoy.co? Yeah, we, we also have letterjoy.com, but letterjoy.co will get you there as well. Okay, thank you very much for joining us. I think this would be an excellent gift for a history buff uh, dad out there, or, you know, mom or Thank you so else. much for having me. Good to see you, man. Appreciate it. How cool is that? Is really cool. That is very letter cool. letter in the mail, and then you can read it. I think that's really neat. That's Dearest cool. Cody. Dear Cody, <laughs> your weather forecast has been wrong for 18 years now. <laughs>